Let's begin tonight with Betsy Johnson, who picked up a campaign contribution from Nike founder Phil Knight of $750,000. Now, in case you don't know, Betsy Johnson is a woman running for Oregon governor who left the Democratic Party and is now not part of any party. Some of you think that makes her an independent, but that's actually not technically correct. Independent is a political party in Oregon, and she is not a member of it. Her campaign website says that she's unaffiliated, but her official filing with the Secretary of State's office lists her as non-affiliated. I guess maybe those two terms are interchangeable. At any rate, she's the leader when it comes to raising money for the governor's race, having it in her bank now with $5.1 million since the start of this year. Democrat Tina Kotek comes in second at the moment with $1.2 million, and Republican Christine Drazen has $1.1 million. But back to Betsy Johnson. Phil Knight has now donated a total of a million dollars to her campaign. I had a chance to talk with Republican strategist Rebecca Tweed this afternoon. She's run several campaigns, including some in which Knight has donated. I asked her what a big contribution like this means in her world. Phil Knight's donation of a million dollars total sends a signal that he's really invested in this campaign, right? And uh, Mr. Knight's been well known for supporting moderate, reasonable candidates um, across both parties at times. And I think it shows that, you know, Senator Johnson has a real shot to make this a competitive campaign. Uh, he takes his contributions very seriously um, and puts a lot of thought behind him. And, and so it's a serious message, I think, particularly to her opponents that, you know, this is a real campaign. Now, on the topic of finances, I asked, why candidates or their campaigns need to raise so much darn money? Particularly in a statewide campaign, the ability to reach voters to get the name recognition you need, it costs money, right? I mean, politics is marketing at its finest. We see it for all sorts of products that we buy and, and campaigns are no different. You cannot replicate, even with the best grassroots organization, all the best operatives, all the social media, you cannot replicate the ability to purchase name recognition through mailers, through television ads. So that's why it's so expensive and why campaigns are always looking out for money. It's the fuel that drives their ship. Now, as our strategist there mentioned, Phil Knight has an extensive history of giving money to governor candidates in Oregon from all different parties. In 2010, he gave $400,000 to Republican Chris Dudley's campaign. Dudley lost that race to Democrat John Kitzhaber. In 2014, Knight switched sides and gave $250,000 to Kitzhaber's re-election campaign, which he won. In 2018, Knight backed Republican Newt Bueller, who was trying to unseat Governor Kate Brown. He dumped a bunch of money into that race, two and a half million dollars. Bueller ended up losing. This year, he's given Johnson $1 million so far. So we'll be watching to see if he gives her any more like he did with Bueller. Now, if you're staring at all those huge dollar figures asking, why is there so much money in Oregon politics? Well, the reason is because our state does not have any campaign contribution limits, although we have gotten closer to passing some in recent years. Oregon is one of just five states with no limits on how much anyone can donate to a political campaign. So how did we get here? Well, back in 1995, voters passed a measure capping donations. But the state Supreme Court decided it violated the part of the Oregon Constitution that read, no law shall be passed restraining the free expression of opinion or restricting the right to speak, write, or print freely on any subject whatever. Then in 2006, voters tried to amend the Constitution to allow donation limits, but it did not pass. In 2016, Multnomah County voters passed their own version of campaign finance reform, capping donations for candidates just in the county. That was challenged in court. In 2020, the state Supreme Court ruled those limits were, quote, not facilely invalid, meaning not automatically unconstitutional. But state officials determined that the ruling did not mean those limits should be automatically put in place either. That same year, voters approved a constitutional amendment allowing new laws that would limit campaign contributions. In 2021, a judge ruled Multnomah County could start enforcing $500 limits for individual donors in local elections. This year, a few groups tried to get contribution limits for statewide races on the ballot. But Secretary of State Shamia Fagan disqualified the proposed initiatives on a technicality. She said the measures did not include the entire text of the state law they wanted to change, which is a rule, but it's also been ignored in the past for other ballot initiatives. And that 
is how we got here. Okay, let's talk about this for a moment. Perhaps I could share my opinion on this. Political campaigns for top offices like governor, as we've heard, are big money events in Oregon, and they're getting bigger all the time. The Oregonian newspaper reports that in 2010, the race for governor cost around $18 million. Just eight years later, the race between Kate Brown and Newt Bueller cost $37 million. Now, I have to admit, that is good news for TV stations like ours. The campaigns know that you watch the news because you care about your community and you vote. So they advertise a lot during the big campaigns. You're seeing some on our air now. You're going to see more in the weeks ahead. But I'm not so sure it's good for voters or for the state in general. After all, who's pouring all that money into the races? Well, as we see today, Nike founder Phil Knight likes to donate in a way that most of us cannot do. And there's other big names as well. He's just the best known. He might be able to argue he's trying to just even the scales to counter the huge amounts of money that Oregon's unions typically spend helping Democrats get elected. Or maybe he's trying to help the University of Oregon or Nike. Or maybe he just wants a moderate elected governor. But I digress. So. Who loses in the race to bring in and spend more campaign money? Well, you do. Let me ask you something. If there's an issue the governor can help with, who do you think has the best chance of influencing that? You or Phil Knight or a union president? By the way, if you don't know, no offense, but it's not you or me. Writing big checks to politicians, of course, does not guarantee they'll do what you want. But it does guarantee a conversation about the issue probably before that check is ever written during the campaign. And it puts them far ahead of the typical voter who might make a small donation or maybe nothing and gets little or no access to the politician once they're elected. That's why good government groups like Honest Elections Oregon drew up three initiatives for voters hoping to get them on the ballot this fall. They would limit the amount of money that a union or a corporation or a person or a third party group can give to a candidate. But you will likely not vote on any of those this fall. Why not? Well, because Secretary of State Shamia Fagan rejected the ballot measures on that technicality. She argued they were written in a way that did not strictly follow the law. And Fagan said that since she took office in January of 2021, she has consistently rejected any initiative that does not strictly follow the law. During her campaign, Fagan did speak out about limits on campaign contributions. She seemed to favor most, except on one group. When we talk about campaign contribution limits, one thing that we should be watch out for is giant corporations and the wealthy who've been rigging the system for years. Now that they see it on the horizon, they only want bilateral disarmament. But the grassroots organizations that have spent decades building up little packs based on little contributions the right-wing playbook wants them to also be extremely limited. I do oppose limits on small donor packs. When we pick what the limits are going to be, those packs that don't take more than that amount per year should be able to give an unlimited amount. Now, let me think. Hmm, under her plan, I wonder who would still qualify. Oh, oh, maybe it's the unions that supported her run for office. Yes, yes, yes. They get their contributions in relatively small amounts from lots of their members. So under the secretary's idea, they could be given unlimited amounts to campaigns like hers. By the way, the Oregonian newspaper, which editorialized and wrote about this as well, noted that Fagan donors spent more than $3 million on her campaign in 2020. And that was three times the amount her Republican opponent spent. So where does that leave us? I'm afraid it's business as usual. The polls show you voters want campaign finance reform. The actions show the politicians do not. A gatekeeper who benefited from the current system will not allow it to be voted on this year. And I think that's too bad. It's hard to see how that decision, even if it is the letter of the law, comes anywhere close to enforcing the spirit of the law, which is to allow us voters to make changes to our system of government when it's needed. Eventually, the people will be heard. And by then, the politicians may not like what they have to say.